A huge flood of news was released over the weekend from a cancer research conference in Europe. And most stocks are moving to the downside. Bristol Myers is selling off on concerns it'll further lose ground to competitor Merck and immunotherapy. Those are, of course, new drugs that unleash the immune system to fight cancer. And smaller biotechs are seeing even bigger negative swings. Check out Clovis. Despite what some saw as an encouraging update in prostate cancer, it's also facing increased competition from AstraZeneca and ovarian cancer. Marathi Therapeutics is selling off after an update for its lung cancer immunotherapy. And Adaptimmune is down on data for its immunotherapy in various types of cancer. Summed up by one biotech watcher today, it's been pretty underwhelming. Now, one stock that was bucking the trend earlier today is Loxo Oncology. Let's bring in CEO and President Dr. Josh Belenker. Loxo's stock is up more than 90% year to date. And though you're kind of just holding on to flat territory, that's pretty good compared to the rest of biotechs who were presenting at ESMO over the weekend. Um, analysts really glowing about the data you had uh, presented there. What, what can you tell us about it? We provided an update to the data we had provided in 2017, and we showed that in another cohort of patients treated with our drug called lerotrectinib, um, the response rate was generally the same. About three out of every four patients have significant reduction in their tumor size. And more importantly, perhaps, is the fact that once patients do respond, they are staying on the drug for an encouraging amount of time. So you're expecting a decision from the FDA on this drug by November 26th, I understand. Um, you've got a partner in Bayer uh, on the drug. And one of the interesting challenges about this space is it's a very rare cancer, just a few thousand patients in the United States. How are you expecting to be able to find all of those? How is it going with awareness and testing for this kind of cancer? Right. We are in this very delicate moment for the program and that FDA is doing a review of the safety and efficacy of the drug to ensure that, it, that it's worthy of approval and can be labeled appropriately. Um, you, you alert to the right question, though. How do we find patients who have the opportunity, perhaps, to benefit from the drug? And it's all about testing. It's all about having their tumors uh, comprehensively assayed for the presence of a DNA abnormality called the TRK fusion. Uh, in terms of the, the glowing analyst reports, a lot of them have said that the competition has basically knocked out the competition from Roach. Stiefel said this removes any lingering speculation about potential competition. How do you view this in terms of strengthening your positioning going into a potential FDA approval in November? It wouldn't be appropriate to comment on someone else's data, sure. uh, but we're very encouraged. It was less effective, b bottom line, coming out of this conference. That's, that, that was a takeaway. It's, it's really important that, you know, FDA review the data in, in, in the absence of, of uh, press releases and such, and they'll have that opportunity perhaps for both data sets, and we'll all await that review. But um, we're really encouraged about that, and the, the options for patients are what matter. And for us, uh, Anticipating the day when perhaps larotrectinib stops working, we launched a program called LOXA 195, which is a different drug that we hope will pick up the pieces should uh, larotrectinib stop working for a given patient. We don't have all the answers yet. It's only in phase one, but that's something that we do is try to focus on what's next for the patient. So, so Meg was a little elliptical in describing the cancer that this treats. Tell me what the cancer is that it treats, how many patients let's say in the United States you expect to maybe be able to reach, and then how do you make money if it is a small cohort? So there's as many as 24 different cancer types where this biomarker has been described, but it's rare in any given cancer. And um, in the United States, there are approximately 2,500, maybe as many as 3,000 patients diagnosed every year, or, or I should say, who have this cancer. The question is, will they be who diagnosed? Have that bio, who have that biomarker in their cancer, which could be uh, of any sort. Or so it could be sources. lung cancers, colon cancers, sarcomas, Got pediatric it. cancers, but it's there at a very rare percentage in each given category. And so that's where these tests come in to be important. So everybody needs the same comprehensive test to know whether or not this drug it could be there for them. But it very much follows the precision oncology or precision medicine model, where we're trying to build very well prescribed selective medicines for selective alterations so that we can have a bespoke solution for every patient in the long run. We're not nearly there yet, but this hopefully is an encouraging sign of where we can get. And as you prepare to enter the market with your first uh, drug, I'm uh, not going to ask you about pricing. I know you can't tell us how you think about pricing or how Bayer or your partner may think about pricing. But more broadly, as you look at what the administration has said about drug pricing recently, some of the actions they've been taking, uh, wanting to include the drug price in the ad uh, for, for the drugs on TV, 
Um, how are you feeling about that environment? Does it make you nervous? Well, thanks for acknowledging our commercial partner at Bayer, who has final say in matters of pricing. And we don't think uh, mass advertising is the right way to, to talk about this drug, given how uh, unique and rare the population is. Um, but to the larger question of, of drug pricing, we think it's really important to protect two ideas. One idea is to make sure that novel medicines that provide benefits to patients are reimbursed and therefore provide incentives for that next generation of medicines that we don't know about today, but uh, biopharma companies all over the world are thinking about committing and risking dollars against. It's really important that we have a system that rewards that. The second idea is can there be relief for patients who today are paying unbelievable out-of-pocket expenses just to have their medicines, no matter how they're priced. Oncology pricing will always be to a premium of an antibiotic or a hypertension drug, and so there needs to be a mechanism to protect patients from this so-called financial toxicity that they face.